So before we go ahead and work with this data and try to draw some conclusions from it, what we actually need to do is start working with data that's related to the data that's in here. So before we really go and try to do scores and figure out what the students are getting on each of these um, assignments, we need to work with all of the other data that's related to the student. Now you might have remembered that when we talked about forms, and I talked about how we needed to include the student's last name, I talked about how you could have other information that was related to last name. And so what I want to do right now is start to create some tables of related data that we can use. So I'm actually just going to take this whole column, the last name column, and I'm going to make a new table out of it by just copying and then pasting into some empty space here. And now that I've pasted into empty space, uh, I can add a new column to this table, and I can put some other data in there. Uh, before I do that, I'm going to make sure that these are not header rows. If they're not header rows, I'm just going to change their style a little bit. I'm going to look a little bit less like header rows. So we've got one header row. And then in this column, I'm going to put something else. So we'll just call that first name. And that's going to be one of the pieces of related data that I have. So this table is going to be called uh, first name. Actually, I call it first name reference because we're going to reference this table when we're trying to get the student's first name. So I'll just go ahead and put in some first names here. And uh, let's see. So we'll go with um, Alex, Brittany. I'm just going to put a whole bunch of these in here. Now that I've got all my names in, I've got a table where I can relate last name to first name for each student. So what I need to do now is make use of this in my rubric data table. So I've got last name already in here, and I need to refer to my first name reference to figure out which first name goes with each of those last names. So the first thing I want to do is make a new column in here for first name. Now what I'm going to do is use the first of a few formulas that we're going to work with that will allow numbers to do some calculations for us. So in this case, we're going to do a reference where we say, take a look at this cell right here. And then based on what you see in that cell, populate this cell with the corresponding first name. Now when we work with formulas, the first thing we need to do is press the equal sign. Okay, the equal sign differentiates regular old text from the formula. And you notice that a little formula editor even pops up when you do that. Now, the way formulas work is they have a name and then some parentheses. And in those parentheses, we're going to put in what we call parameters. Now, the parameters are all the pieces of information a formula needs to work. So the formula that we're going to use is called lookup. And it's going to let us look up something from another table. Now, the two parameters for lookup are the reference, what I'm actually looking at, and the set of data that I'm going to look for it in. So the first parameter is the, the reference, what I'm looking for. And I'm just going to click this first table, this uh, first cell right here, because whatever's in that cell is what I want to look at and evaluate. 
So that's my first parameter, and I'm going to separate that from the second parameter using a comma. Now for the second parameter, I need a data set. And the data set is going to be this table right here. So I'm just going to select that whole set of data, all the names. And you'll see that uh, the first parameter represents only one cell, A2. Second parameter represents a whole range, A2 to B21, in this first name reference table. So now I'll just close up my parentheses, because parameters are always in parentheses. And I'll press the little checkbox here. And numbers has filled in the first name that corresponds to the last name I selected in my reference. Now, some of you may be familiar with this, others maybe haven't seen it before. But you can actually take the uh, bottom right corner of any cell in a spreadsheet program like Numbers or Google Spreadsheets, and you can drag it down to copy in kind of a smart uh, way all of the information that you're using. Now in this case it's not going to work because of the way this table is set up, but what it should do is populate all of these cells with the corresponding first names. Now the problem with that is that when I try to do that, it's looking in the wrong place for these names. For example, if I copy down to the next line and I click on this, let's take a look at what this, the formula is actually looking for. So it's looking up the correct last name. That's good. But there seems to be a problem with this first name reference A3 to B22. And the problem is, when I move down one line from this, the next line wants to look for another line down here at the bottom of the table, and there isn't a line down here. So I need to make sure, before I copy this formula all the way down the column, that it's looking in the right place. So if I go ahead and click on first name reference right here, I can see this is the range that we're looking at. These are all of the cells that we're going to be looking at. And if I actually click on the right side of this little orange display here, I can choose relative or absolute values. Now, relative values will change as I drag down this column. So the lower I get in this column, the lower it will look in this table. That's not really what I want. I want to look at the same set of data every time. So I'm going to choose absolute row and column for this table in both cases here. And what that does is it makes it that, so that as I drag down in this column and I do my kind of smart search, it always searches the same set of data. It never tries to keep moving down in the table to look for new data. Accept. And now when I drag first name down, there's all your first names. Now I'm going to do this with a couple more pieces of data that I think you'll find useful. The next one is going to be class period. So I'll just make a copy of my other reference table that I already have, but this one is going to be period instead of last name. I'll just go ahead and put in period one. Copy that over a few names. Period two. Oops. Copy that over a few names. And then period three. Copy the rest of them. Remember when I use that smart drag, I can drag all the way down, but actually that's not going to work for me right now because it's trying to increase the number each time. It tries to make a guess about what you want, and in this case, that's not really what I want. So I'm just going to copy and paste. Now I've got period one, two, and three. So this is my reference that tells me which period each student is in. And just like I did for first name, I'm going to make a new column in here for period. I'm going to use the lookup function again. So I'll hit equals to open up my formula editor. I'll type lookup, because that's the name of my formula. And I'll open some parentheses. And then remember, the two things that go in the parentheses are the reference that I'm looking for and the data set that I want to find it inside of. So the reference is the last name. That's what we're using to tie together all the data about this student. And then after a comma, I'll put in my data set, which is all of this. I'll close up my parentheses. And the last thing I have to do before I forget is make sure that for my data set, because I never want to change which cells I'm looking at, I need to make sure that those are set to absolute row and column so that we never look in another row and column other than what I've chosen here. Now, when I drag this down, I can automatically fill in the data regarding which period each student is in. I'm going to do this one more time for student ID, which is something that I always make sure to do. So I 
another column for student ID, and I will make another column for student ID reference. This one's going to be instead of period, it will be student ID. Now I'll remove this data, and instead I'll put in student IDs. So that'll be one, and we'll just go on down the list. There we go. So that smart fill helps me fill in all those numbers. Let me try and name these tables correctly. So this one was my student ID reference. This one is my period reference. And then I'll fill in that student ID table doing the same thing. Use the equal sign to open up my formula editor. Type the name of the formula, which is lookup. And then the parameters. The first parameter is the last name. The second parameter is the data set. So that's this set right here. And make sure that I set absolute row and column so that I don't change the data set as I'm looking up. And then we'll just drag on down and it fills it all in. So let's talk about a few ways this can actually be useful. One more, actually we'll talk about one more categorization, one thing that we can do to make it easier to work with. So one of the reasons I like numbers is because numbers supports some special categorization options. I can actually choose any of these uh, columns and I can categorize by that column. So I'll just go ahead and choose period because I think that's a good one to do. If I right click I can choose categorize by this column. And what that does is it adds a couple of special collapsible rows so that now my table is separated by period. So I've got period one in a group, period two in a group, period three in a group. And I can collapse or expand each one as I'm working with it. So that makes it really easy to focus on just one period at a time. So now that my data is all categorized, we'll start to take a look at how to actually do calculations with it.